So we're heading over to Shanghai today to meet Andreas, who's been hacking on some pretty impressive human-computer interaction demos for public smart displays such as photo booths, game controllers, and much more. So Andreas, great to have you on the show today. Tell us more about yourself and your background. Yeah, morning, Jason. Um, yeah, I'm Andreas. I'm the technical director at Media Man in Shanghai, and um, part of my job here is I'm researching new, interesting, and uh, exciting technology that we prop that we potentially can use in interactive or experiential projects. And um, as part of this, we of course also came along TensorFlow JS, and we built a couple of pretty exciting things with that. Awesome! Sounds like a really exciting job. Something I definitely like to get involved in in the future for sure. Sounds really cool. Um, so yes, you, you've got some um, projects that you've been working on. Maybe you can tell us more about what you've been hacking on with TensorFlow JS. Yeah, so if you probably saw a couple of my demos that I already posted on Twitter, we have um, we have created a couple of gaming experiences, like a very simple, a very simple kind of uh, Flappy Bird game that you control with your that you control with your head, with your nose. Another one is we have a, a car driving experience where you use a virtual steering wheel to to guide a car. It's kind of an endless running experience to collect coins with a car. But there is also more full-featured applications like a, like a photo experience where you use uh, gestures and hand controls and even facial gestures to control this application. That sounds super cool. Can we see them in action? Yeah, sure. Let's probably let's probably start with the Flappy Bird demo here. And um, this Flappy Bird demo, Flappy Fun as we call it, well, you see me appearing in front of the camera here. It asks you to raise the hand, so it detects I'm raising my hand. It gives you a quick introduction, asks you to give a thumbs up to, to start a game. And um, after that, it becomes like a, a funny workout doing the dance in front of the camera where the bird is actually mapped to the position of my nose here and it follows the, the position of my nose. This demo is done with uh, TensorFlow.js using, using the, the PostNet model. And um, as I said, we're using, we're using the nose position to, to track the position of the bird. And um, yeah, I'll tell a little bit more about why we built this demo, but um, we can probably see another one. We can see this, uh, this car demo. So you see me here again, in front of the camera, holding a virtual steering wheel, guiding this beautiful car through the city and collecting coins. And um, why did we actually build these demos here? Because in using TensorFlow.js, we used traditional TensorFlow before. Now we're using TensorFlow.js. We wanted to evaluate uh, how well it actually performs and how well it performs on, on, on different devices. Because when you're building experiences, experiences that customers use that they, for example, use by gestures or by motions or even by emotions with their face. Um, one of, a very important thing is it has to be responsive. And we wanted to, to know how responsive can we be with TensorFlow.js. And if you want to check out a technology, whether it's uh, if there is lag or how responsive, how precise it is, uh, a good way to start is always to create like gaming experiences because as a gamer, you know, when you're playing a game and it, it lags behind, uh, the controls lag behind, you immediately notice that one, it becomes unplayable. So it's definitely the ultimate test for sure. To, if you can play the game and control it and win, then you know you're doing well with your frames per second. <laughs> that That's like the ultimate test. So this is why we started with this Flappy Bird experience. This was actually to check how precise can we be because um, when you're using your nose to guide these birds through this maze of pipes, then um, obviously if it lags behind or the, it's just not precise enough, all that happens is you're ending up hitting the pipes. But as you can see in the demo, I was actually pretty smooth in navigating these pipes. And it's actually a really fun experience. The same thing goes for this car experience where, you, where you're moving this car through, through the city. And um, if we had like a lag of two seconds every time we turn the wheel, then this would be completely unplayable. But as you can see from the video, it actually performs pretty well. So when I'm turning the wheel, there is just a couple of frames of lag behind that. And um, yeah, it's totally playable. It's, it's really totally playable. So I just like to dive into this one a little bit more, actually. So sure. I think you said you're using PoseNet to run this and maybe a couple of other models as well in conjunction with this. So I'm kind of curious, like um, to get it running at this 
high frames per second? Like, what kind of hardware is driving this experience? Uh, is it some high-end PC or is it middle-of-the-range middle stuff? Uh, can you give any more details on that? Yeah, so in, in this, uh, for these experiences that we just saw, this is mostly PostNet being used. And um, PostNet is actually a very, very lightweight network. So the, the hardware the hardware we're using in this demo is like an i7 CPU, a pretty recent i7 CPU plus an NVIDIA 2060, which is like a, by today's standards, it's like a mid-range uh, mid range CPU. However, in order to run PostNet, you can you can actually use much lower end GPUs too. I mean, this is the hardware I had available here, but uh, especially for PostNet, we even have a demo running it on uh, TensorFlow.js, running it on, on, on mobile devices. It performs really, really well. Of course, we have a, we have a couple of other demos, like um, for example, this photo experience, which is a more full featured experience and not just uses PostNet, but actually uses three to four networks at the same time oh cool maybe we can see that one now and just see that in action as well yeah yeah let, 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 let's have a look let's have a look okay let's go into the photo booth so here you see a, another one of the demos here this is like a, a photo booth experience where people can take a, a kind of holiday picture so again it starts by me raising the hand i can read some instructions i can use a hand gesture to to activate it afterwards I'm using again my hand to swipe around different backgrounds here. You can actually see I'm in front of these backgrounds, but not using a green screen or anything. I mean, you see the actual background is my is my workshop here, and we're using body pics to to remove the to remove the background. And to start the photo experience, you see me first all grumpy here, like I'm not smiling at all, and I'm activating this photo experience by a smile, so it detects the the facial expression. And after that, I have to do like the dance with different different hand gestures. And then when four pictures are taken, I choose my favorite picture again using my hand movement here. And when I decide on a picture, I like grab it and pull it out, and again confirm with a thumbs up. And then I can. I get a QR code, I can scan this QR code with my phone and download it on my phone and share it on Instagram or whatever. So you can see there is actually not just one network, there is a lot of networks go a lot of networks being used here. So actually, yes, sure, it's again PostNet, for example, to detect that a person is uh, in front of the screen and that I'm raising my hand. But it also uses the hand post network to, let's say, detect uh, the fingers, the finger, the finger landmarks. Um, Again, using PostNet to, to detect the swipes, using body pics for the, for the background removal. So this is basically the virtual green screen that I have here. And there is another network called Face API, which detects like uh, smiles or me being angry or me being looking, giving all kinds of facial expressions. So we're actually running up to four different networks here at the same time. And of course, this is a bit more taxing on the, especially on the GPU side. So this is why this is the only reason why I put a 2060 into this computer. If it's just for PostNet or just for a single network, you can run them on a mobile phone. I mean, this is totally possible. Yeah, this, this is super cool. And I just like to point out here, we've seen a lot of the community exploring some HCI kind of stuff, like just with hands or, or just with the face or just with one thing. But I love how you've combined multiple things here to give a much richer experience that can do much, much more, in fact. And this is super cool um, to see that. I'm just curious, uh, on the hardware side, have you uh, explored at all kind of running on different parts of the hardware, different models? So maybe one model on the CPU, one model on the GPU, that kind of stuff to see if that could help out? Or what explorations have you done there? So what we've done here, probably we can have a look at the, the back end, actually, what's happening behind the scenes. And um, what's happening behind the scenes is we created a software, which we call the, the controller software which like um, controls and manages all the networks that are running and uh, captures all the raw data from the different networks and combines them, combines them and also like filters them, cleans them a little bit. So you see here, this is, um, we have several pictures here in this controller. You see the main camera image, which is for example, me raising the hand. This is, you see the PostNet landmarks, but you see also like hand post tracking my hand and you see face API tracking my face here, especially because um, what's happening here is that three to four networks are running and we package this into an electron app here. And uh, each of the networks, each of the networks uses its, its own process, which 
on which again then uses a WebGL backend. I mean, TensorFlow is usually WebGL based. TensorFlow.js is WebGL based. So each of them are using like a Chrome instance with WebGL to 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 get the raw data. We're then using this uh, this controller software, this controller software to first filter and clean the raw data because, as you know, this is like a when you get raw data from a from a network, the data is kind of okay, but it needs a bit of uh, filtering and a bit of um, let's say a bit of cleaning. Uh, this is what's happening in here. Also, what we discovered is that just using the raw data, it kind of works for some applications. But if you really want to push this to a production level application, then you also need to make some um, how to say, for example, for PostNet. We do not use the, the direct uh, screen coordinates of every of every uh, landmark, but we're actually making them relative to the to the person's body because you know people come in all shapes and sizes. And um, for example, to play Flappy Bird, a tall person uh, would be would have an unfair advantage compared to a small per to a, to a smaller person. So the trick is to make it all relative actually to your body, like start with the, with the shoulder level and then see how high can a person raise their hand, like about this level or how low can they go and, and always use the relative data to control this. So the challenge here, the challenge in making this wasn't just using the networks, but also how to use the actual data. You get to a certain point using the direct raw data of the, of the networks, but um, you do have some to do some cleaning and also some post-processing normali normalization, as we call it. And it's really great to see how you, you tackle that problem here to make it fair to all players, no matter what their body shape or size and this <laughs> kind of stuff. And uh, I think people often forget mm. it's not just a machine learning model. There's a lot of other work that goes around it to then make it a really playable experience sure. and that kind of sure. stuff. So it's really great to see you having done that there. So I guess my, my next question here is, What's the end game? Where is all this leading to? Is this going to be used in production or what, what's going on here? Well, this is absolutely going to production because I, I really have to, to tell you, super impressed with what TensorFlow.js can do and, and how easy it is actually to use. And, um, you know, it is going to production because um, there is a huge interest in applications that are being gesture based or motion control based right now because, you know, we have we still have COVID going on here. And um, it's not like in experiential or event business, people usually were used to touch things like touch screens, touch touch physical items, touch physical elements. However, there is a huge trend now in, on, on converting everything to going touchless or gesture based and something. So we do have, uh, we actually we actually offer touchless or gesture based concepts in, in almost all the new projects that we do here and clients here are very open to that and we are doing projects on a regular basis that include um, touchless or gesture based technologies and yes based on tensorflow.js so yes this is absolutely going into production and it's totally production ready i look forward to seeing it somewhere out in the wild next time i'm visiting china for sure and maybe elsewhere in the world too <laughs> You're very welcome to to come over. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> just check out my Twitter. I'm occasionally posting a couple of cool projects there. So yeah. Excellent. Awesome. So this is like really great stuff. And I'm sure the people watching right now would love to kind of try some of these demos out themselves. And I know some of these things are tied to the hardware of the kiosk itself, but maybe some of these are open source in some capacity. Do you have any links you could share with us? Yes, absolutely. There is some things I already shared, like for example, a library which is built on top of hand pose, which can recognize like um, like finger hand uh, hand gestures, like for example, a thumbs up or a victory sign. It's called finger pose, and it's available on my GitHub. There is a couple of other demos available on my GitHub, like for example, for this um, facial emotion recognition. There are some 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 demos how you can build game experiences around that, and uh, yeah. We are eventually going to release this controller software that I that I showed you, which brings like all the networks together and filters and cleans the data. We are eventually going to release that also as open source. And I'm probably gonna put this on my GitHub sometime after Christmas. I'm using Christmas time to clean up the code a little bit because honestly, it's still a bit messy and I feel a bit embarrassed to show this code to the world. But yeah, I'll take some time and put this on my GitHub and I'll share the link with all of you. Awesome. Yeah, so we'll definitely put the links in the description, of course, for everyone to click on. And do check those out after the show. And I've got to say, follow this guy on Twitter as well, because his posts are awesome over there. There's always something new coming out. So a very fun Twitter account to follow, too. 
And with that, I just wanted to thank you so much for coming on the show today to talk about your experiences and demos and hopefully see you soon. Thank you for today. Cheers.